howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools and welcome back to yet another episode in our Q&A series. You know, I say it all the time, thanks for all the questions, keep them coming and we'll get to them as quickly as possible. Make sure that you send them via email. Yes, again, via email. Uh, we don't really get to them, we can't really get to them in the comments here on YouTube. And uh, of course, uh, if they go to social media, I'm never going to see them, that's for sure. So send them over to admin at madriveroutfitters.com. Be sure to include your name and your address. And if we answer them here on the YouTube channel as part of this series, we're going to send you a free hat and a fly box. And also, as always, if you like what we do here, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's free. And also, give us a thumbs up if you don't mind. It just makes us feel good. And I, I like to feel good. Okay, let's jump right in today. Ah. Better. <clears throat> Our good friend, Ronald Fisher. Ron Fisher from Hilliard, Ohio. We're neighbors, Ron. Literally, I, know I live... Uh, right on the edge of Hilliard myself. Um, thanks for the question. And Ron says, Brian, you stress, and after watching all the videos, I agree, polarized sunglasses are a must have. I have two questions. What color lenses? And then the second question is, are such glasses available to fit over prescription lenses? Um, as you know, we are big fans of Costa around here as are most anglers and fly anglers. And Costa basically has two lenses that you want to uh, focus on. And first and foremost is called green mirror. And the green mirror is going to be your best all around day in, day out sunglasses, polarized sunglasses to wear in most fishing conditions. We f use these fishing freshwater, and then of course it's my go-to lens for saltwater. But you may encounter situations where you have low light situations, a cloudy day, uh, the, uh, you know, it's overcast, gray skies. I also carry with me the sunrise silver mirror, and that's going to cut less light, and it's going to allow you to see a lot better on cloudy days. In fact, I carry both of them with me um, when I'm fishing in the salt. If I've got a bright day, I've got the green mirror, and if it's a little bit cloudy, um, rainy, what have you, the sunrise silver mirror come out, and it really helps. It doesn't cut as much light, but still increases my contrast, okay? Um, so those are the two lens colors that we focus on most. There are a few others. We do sell some uh, gray lenses. Um, these cut much more light, and they're going to be better for, say, driving or if you're just wearing them in the beach or something like that and you're not worried about increasing contrast like when you're fishing. And then there's the blue mirror and that's also going to cut a whole lot of light and again, uh, not w where you're not worried about increasing contrast. And these are very popular for say offshore fishing in very bright conditions out on the water in a, in a, in a boat in the deep water. So a couple of others that you might see on our website, the gray and the blue mirror, but the two fishing are the green mirror and then the sunrise silver mirror. So um, next question, are such glasses available to fit over prescription lenses? And that's a big yes. And they are called cocoons. Cocoons come in a variety of different sizes and a couple of different lens colors and they easily fit right over prescription glasses and they're actually not bad. Uh, granted, they don't look quite as cool, I will say, um, but we have a lot of people that just wear these without their prescription glasses and uh, they work just fine and I think they're $49, $55, something like that. Of course, there's a link down there or maybe up here or somewhere around, it's close that you can go to our website and check them out. I think there's good descriptors on the sizing. And of course, if you have any questions on the sizing, if you're looking to get a pair of cocoons, you can, oddly enough, pick up the phone and give us a call. We're happy to help. So there you go, Ron. We're gonna get you out a hat and a fly box right away. And uh, I might even drive it to your house on my way home tonight. Next up, 
Eric Ramirez. Eric has a similar question. And Eric says, thanks for all the great videos. I have a few questions for your team. Sunglasses. There are so many choices out there. Glass, poly, wraparound, open bottom lenses, interchangeable lenses. Ah. Ah. Please talk about what you guys recommend and what you prefer. I seem to like the optics of the glass lenses, but I'm also worried about durability. I would also like to know about retainers. Okay. So, Eric, um, real quick. Uh, Costa, which again... We love Costa. They make two different types of lenses, and the first is going to be the polycarbonate, and that's the 580P. And these are essentially um, these are essentially plastic lenses. And polycarbonate is not going to be quite as clear and quite as good optical quality as glass. The next choice. These are going to be um, a little bit lighter and they're gonna be less prone to shattering. If you're, for example, if you're riding a motorcycle, um, or for that matter, if you're a really bad caster and you throw cone head streamers a lot, you might consider some polycarbonate lenses. If you whack yourself right in the, in the eyeball with your cone head streamer, uh, a glass lens could shatter and that's not gonna be good. Um, so polycarbonate are available and the, they're called the 580P from Costa. And then, of course, the 580G is glass. Glass is going to be a little bit heavier, a little bit better optical quality, and they're going to be much, much more scratch resistant. Polycarbonate lenses can scratch. Glass lenses can shatter. So a couple of things to consider. I'm a big fan of glass myself. Um, I don't plan on riding a motorcycle or having anybody punch me in the face or hitting myself with a cone-headed woolly bugger. Um, I, I don't fish woolly buggers very much. There you go. And also on a side note, I want to make sure that if Costas aren't in your budget per se, make sure that you check out the SunCloud optics on our website. SunCloud makes some really, really great frames. Uh, they're all polycarbonate lenses, and I think they all still sell for $49.95. They've got a basic amber lens, which is good all around, and then they have a green mirror, which is going to be excellent for actually cutting more light in very bright conditions. We sell mostly the amber, although the green mirror are pretty popular as well. So check out SunCloud polycarbonates on our website. Uh, I think they come in at $49.95 and they're a decent pair of fishing glasses. I wear these back and forth to work as my day in day out glasses because I don't wear my good glass fishing gla sunglasses unless I'm fishing. So uh, second question that Eric has. Oh, by the way, Eric is from Cheyenne, Wyoming. I don't think I mentioned that. And good, you gave us your address so we'll get you out that hat in the fly box. And next question, do the click readers work with sunglasses? I'm getting older and I've started to need readers for tying all of my knots. Well, obviously you know that I do, Eric, and yes, I use them all the time with my glasses. In fact, I think, yeah, my glasses are right there. Here's my Costa green mirror and I use the click readers with them all the time. I can tie my knots, I can thread flies, and then back down come the clicks. So the answer is yes, they absolutely work with sunglasses. Um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Eric, you also asked about retainers, okay? And there's all kinds of retainers on the market. You can look at our website and you'll see Costa has a bunch of them. The C-Line retainers, kind of a metal cable cord. You've got the uh, halyard retainer. Again, a metal cord and a certain type of attachment here. This is called the bowline. I actually kind of like this one. It's a silicone retainer. And uh, this one tends to be pretty easy to use. Um, this one has a clip, which is what I'm using right now because my frames that I've kind of settled upon, uh, it's called the Jose, and they only really accept these clips. They've got holes here, the clips, uh, I'll be honest with you, I, I can't stand them. I hate these clips. They get caught in my hair all the time. Um, I don't like the metal ones either because they stick out 
And let's say when you're driving or even fishing, you've got your head up against something that pushes. Uh, I don't like them. I'm a big fan of either the bowline or the old croquis style. You know, they, there's nothing better than a pair of croquis. Um, they fit on most glasses. They're comfortable. They drape on your shoulder. Uh, they don't stick out. They don't get stuck in my hair and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and croquis are fun. They come in all kinds of different fish patterns. Um, you've got your brown trout, rainbow trout. You've got brook trout. You've got uh, hippy dippy kind of stuff. So nothing beats croquis. Croquis is kind of uh, synonymous with the retainer. Uh, the only negative of this, if you're sweating a lot, they can get a little wet, but hey, that's what it's all about, man. You're supposed to be out there getting after it, and if your croquis are a little bit wet, well, let them dry off. So um, there you go. I'm a croquis guy in a retainer. Question number three. Very, very important, Eric. This is awesome. I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, when I take my reel off my rod and line, the line and tippet all the way up, I spend more time trying to find my tippet than I do fishing. Well, we've all done this and we've all heard this before. How do you guys store your reel between fishing to make it easier to find your tippet? I've tried leaving a little tag end out, but it seems to always end up getting tangled. Well, Eric, this is very, very important. And for everyone out there, I'm going to guess most of you have never heard this. Don't ever reel your leader all the way up into the reel. Always leave a little bit of a tag end sticking out. And yes, Eric, it's going to get tangled. If you keep your reel in a case, like a zippered case, it's going to get caught in the zipper and you're going to mess up the tippet. But if you reel this all the way up, finding it is going to be the least of your worries. Okay. What's going to happen is because the tippet is almost always the thinnest diameter. It's gonna get under wrapped in one of the wraps of the leader or the fly line itself. And it may never come back to haunt you, but chances are pretty good at some point, at some time, that under wrap is gonna get you, okay? That, uh, let's say you're fishing uh, a bone fish, and all of a sudden that you catch up to that under wrap. Now it might be in your fly line and it might be all the way back in your backing, but that under wrap that was caused by reeling this all the way in can be enough of a hiccup to where it's going to break your tippet or your leader. I know it sounds crazy, but if you think about it, I'm right. This was taught to me many, many years ago by Flip Pallet and Lefty Cray. Um, it's just that I don't hear anybody talking about it. Uh, um, and, and we teach it to people here in the shop and they say, oh, I've never thought about that. I've never heard about that. Um, and if you do it repeatedly, let's say you've got an eight weight that you're fishing in salt water and you repeatedly reel it all the way up and then you got to go digging to find it. And there's an under wrap. And let's say you do that 15 times. You might have 15 under wraps. That's going to be a nightmare at some point. Okay. Um, and if that bonefish or a carp or even a pike or a muskie is taken off running down the stream and all of a sudden that under wrap hits in your fly line or your backing, it can cause you to break your tippet, not to mention it's just a mess getting it untangled. So, uh, yes, Eric, you're going to have to replace some tippets. It's going to get tangled. It's going to get a little bit mangled sometimes, but leave yourself four to six inches of that sticking out and you will avoid having those under wraps ever. I promise. So cool. Eric and Ron, thanks for the questions. We'll get you out the hat in the fly box right away. As always, send your questions to admin at madriveroutfitters.com. If you need immediate assistance, pick up the phone and give us a call. As always, thanks for tuning in. Subscribe to our channel. It's free and it's fun. And give us a thumbs up. It makes us feel good. So stay tuned. We got a lot more coming at you and we'll see you real soon. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.